Father in heaven, I come before you this afternoon. I thank you for this wonderful, Lord, opportunity that you allow me, Lord, to bring forth your word. Thank you, Lord, for uh, this time and for the people that you have gathered here today. Lord, I ask that you give us ears to hear, hearts, uh, eyes to see, and hearts to understand what your message is for us today. We ask this in the name of Jesus, amen and amen. I'm going to uh, ask when we start to project the Bible scripture. Voy a pedir que cuando vayan a proyectar los versículos bíblicos. Specifically for the passage that we're going to be focusing on. Específicamente los versículos que vamos a estar enfocados to please project it in the New King James Version. Que por favor lo proyecten en la versión Reina Valera. New King James Version in English. La nueva versión de Reina Valera. Right. And please project them in Spanish. Por favor, uh, proyectolo en español. This way she doesn't have to read them. Y así no tengo, así ella no tiene que leerlo. Amen. Amen. We all know that the life of Jesus is primary, primarily outlined in the four Gospels. Todos sabemos que la vida de Jesús está descrita principalmente en los cuatro evangelios. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mateo, Lucas, Marcos, y Juan. And in those synoptic Gospels and in those four books, en esos cuatro libros, en esos cuatro evangelios, we read of gene the genealogy of Jesus, the nativity of Jesus, the Le public ministry of Jesus. Leemos acerca de su gene la genealogía de Jesús, la natividad de su ministerio. The passion of Jesus, the teachings of Jesus, la the crucifixion of Jesus, the resurrection of Jesus, and even his ascension. Eh, leemos también eh, acerca de su pasión, la crucifixión, resurrección y de su ascensión. Yet, even with all this, there are what Bible scholars call the silent years. Y a pesar de todo esto, hay lo que los eh, exegetas dicen, los años silenciosos. The silent years are the years between the birth of Christ and the beginning of his public ministry. Los años silenciosos, lo que nos referimos es a su eh, nacimiento y hasta el comienzo de su ministerio en público. Most scholars would agree that Jesus was born thereabouts the years 6 B.C. and 4 B.C. Y muchos teólogos creen que esta, estos eventos ocurrieron entre los años 60 uh, antes Seis. de... Seis. Bueno, Seis. Seis. Eh, año seis y cuatro. Y, y cuatro. And there are a lot of events in the four Gospels concerning the birth of Christ. Y hay muchos eventos que tienen que ver con, en la palabra, hay los eventos que tienen que ver con el nacimiento de Jesús. For instance, in the book of Matthew, uh, in the first chapter, we see that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. Vemos que Jesús, eh, por ejemplo, en el primer capítulo, nació en, Beth en Betel. It was a fulfillment of a prophecy by the prophet Micah when he said, But you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come for me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from old and from ancient days. What verse was that? That was uh, Micah 5.2. So we read about the, the birth of Jesus. Así que estamos hablando del nacimiento de Jesús y lo que el pastor acabó de leer está en Miqueas 5.2. We also read that his birth was heralded by angels and he was visited by shepherds. Y cuando leemos acerca de su nacimiento vemos que estaba rodeado de ángeles y de pastores. On the eighth day he was brought to the temple by his parents Joseph and Mary. Y en el octavo día, fue, él fue llevado al templo por sus padres, José y María. To fulfill Jewish law, to be circumcised. Para cumplir con la ley judía en cuanto a la circuncisión. 
And the Bible further tells us that there in the temple he met or was greeted by an elderly man by the name of Simeon. Y la Biblia nos narra que cuando estaba en el templo allí se encontraron ellos con un hombre llamado Simeón. Simeon was an elderly man who had been told or visited by the Holy Spirit and told that he would not die until he would see the Lord's Messiah. Y él, este era un hombre justo y piadoso y esperaba la consolación de Israel y se le había dicho que él no iba a morir hasta que conociera al Mesías. And it says that he took Jesus into his arms. Y dice que tomó a Jesús en sus brazos. And in Luke chapter 2 verses 29 through 32 he said, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you may now dismiss your servant in peace. For my eyes have seen your salvation which you have prepared in sight of all nations. A light for revelation to the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. And again, it could just be projected in Spanish so she doesn't have to read it and we save some time. Y una vez más está proyectado los versículos para que ella no tenga que leerlo en español. Then he told Mary, and I'm talking about Simeon. Y luego le dijo a María, estoy hablando de Simeón. In, ver, in Luke chapter 2, verses 34 and 35. En, en Lucas, versículo, eh, eh, capítulo 2, versículos 34 al 35. This child is destined to cause the failing and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that will be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your own soul. So, we, f we see that there are many events that Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John cover during the birth of Jesus. Así we, que vemos que hay muchos eventos que Mateo, Marcos, Lucas, y Juan hablan acerca de Jesús. Also there in the temple in Jerusalem, after they just met Simeon. Y ahí también vemos que en el templo, luego que ellos se encuentran con Simeón. The Bible says that there was a prophetess by the name of Anna. La Biblia enseña que hay una profetisa llamado Ana. She also was an elderly woman who was a widow for and was 84 years old. También una anciana y una viuda por 80, uh, 84 años. And the Bible says that she walked up to Jesus, uh, walked up to, Ma to Mary and Joseph and told them. Y la Biblia dice que ella caminó hacia María y José y le dijo that the child was the redemption of Jerusalem. Que, y le dijo que el niño era la redención para Jerusalén. Also during those first two years of the life of Jesus, también eh, durante esos año, primeros años de la vida de Jesús, he was visited by Magi from the east. Él fue visitado desde el, desde el este por mi, mm, Magi. Por Magi, los, los tres. Lo, Los magos. Los dos magos. Tres. O tres magos, perdón, corrigiendo. And the Bible says that they came to worship him and were bearing gifts. Y la Biblia enseña que ellos vinieron a adorarle y le trajeron obsequios. Shortly thereafter, King Herod orders the massacre of all boys in Bethlehem. Y luego el rey Herodes manda matar a todos los niños en Belén. But the Bible says that Joseph being warned by an angel y la Biblia enseña que José siendo avisado por un ángel was told to take the child and his wife to Egypt. Eh, le dijo que llevara a, a su esposa y al niño hacia and, Egipto. And was told to remain there until Herod died. Y que permaneciera allí hasta que muriera Herodes. And again, a vision from the Lord or an angel of the Lord comes and visits Joseph in y, Egypt. Y nuevamente el ángel visita a José en Egipto en una visión. But decides to return to Israel and settle in the region of Galilee. Pero decide entonces irse para, eh, por guianza del ángel, a la región de Galilea. Jesus, around this period of time, is about two and a half years old, there, you know, more or less. Y durante este tiempo, ya Jesús tenía alrededor de dos años y medio. So you notice all the events that occurred in the first two years. Entonces vemos todos los eventos que ocurren en esos primeros años. The visitation of angels. La visitación de los ángeles. The manifestation of, of 
things that were unseen before. La manifestación de, de eventos que no se habían visto anteriormente. But then came the silent years. Pero luego vinieron los años silenciosos. These silent years be, would be between the ages of two and thirty. Y estos años silenciosos ocurren entre la edad de dos a treinta años. And I don't know about you, but I've always been curious about those years in the life of Jesus. Y no sé de ti, pero yo siempre he sentido curiosidad por esos años. Because those Jesus. are the formative years in a person. Porque esos son los años formativos de una persona. They're the years of growth and development. Esos son los años de crecimiento y desarrollo. You see the stage of preschool stage, the childhood stage. Vemos la el, la fase de pre de los años preescolar the adolescent stage the youth stage la, la fase de la adolescencia and the early manhood stage y la fase de la adolescencia eh, adulta temprana God chose to keep these years silent Dios escogió estos años para mantenerlos en silencio with the exception of one passage con la excepción de un pasaje And today I want to talk to you about that one passage. Y hoy quiero hablarte de ese pasaje bíblico. When I study the Bible, I like to read between the lines. Cuando yo estudio la palabra, la Biblia, yo me gusta le eh, estudiar y leer entre líneas. And that to me is not just a simple uh, occurrence. It's not a coincidence y para mí eso no es una mera casualidad. there's something there's a message there that un, for between 2 and 30 there's only one passage of the scripture y hay un mensaje ahí entre el, el 2 y el 30 hay un mensaje ahí I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke chapter 2 quiero que vayas conmigo al libro de Lucas capítulo 2 Verses 42 to 51. Versículos 42 al 51. 51. I also want to just take a moment to say thank you, Luke. Quiero tomar un momento para decir gracias, Lucas. Because Matthew, Mark, and John. Porque Mateo, Marcos, y Juan. Did not add this passage no añadieron estos pasajes or this occurrence o esta, este evento. but Luke Pero Lucas, in the first few verses en los primeros vers eh, versículos, it says that he investigated dice que él le investigó. and he wanted to see and, 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 and if you know the book of Luke was written thereabouts the year 52, 53 y el libro de Lucas fue escrito entre los años 52 y 53. But this is all occurring in, in the very first few years of the millennium. Y todo esto está ocurriendo en los primeros años del milenio. But Luke, who was a non-Jew, Lucas no era judío, decided to investigate the events. Decidió investigar estos and eventos. And he was able to find through y, investigative uh, searching y a través de su investigación él logra conseguir this, this occurrence in the life of Jesus when he is 12 years old estas, estos eventos cuando Jesús tenía 12 años the theme of this message is called my father's business el tema del mensaje es el negocio de mi padre are we in chapter 2 verse 42 of the book of Luke estamos en Lucas 2 versículo 42 And again, it could just be projected in Spanish. Y nuevamente, I'll read it in English. Nuevamente lo proyectamos en español y yo lo leeré en inglés. It says 2:42. Dice 2:42. I'll read from 41 to to give us a good uh, a good start. It says every year his parents went to Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the feast according to the custom. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem, but they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. 
After three days, they found him in the temple court, sitting among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. And here are recorded the very first words of Jesus. Y aquí están registradas los primera, las primeras palabras de Jesús. The very first time that Jesus is quoted. La primera vez que Jesús habla y que se, se registra aquí. He says, why were you searching for me, he asks. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's business? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart and Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and men. I want us to study this context, the Quiero, context of what is occurring here. Quiero estudiar el contenido en contexto lo que, de lo que se está diciendo aquí. It is possible that Joseph and Mary, and I'm talking about them both, attended the Passover festival in Jerusalem multiple times. Es posible que José y María atendieron, fueron, asistieron a la fiesta de la Pascua en numerada Ocasiones. For sure, Joseph would go every year because every male had to present themselves in Jerusalem for the feast of the Passover. Y de seguro que José tuvo que haber ido a la fiesta porque se esperaba que todo varón cabeza del hogar atendiera la fiesta. In fact, there were three feasts throughout the year that every male had to attend. De hecho, habían tres fiestas en el año que todo varón Jefe de familia tenía que atender. The feast of the Passover. La fiesta de la Pascua. The feast of Pentecost. La fiesta de Pentecostés. And the feast of the Tabernacles, which was the beginning of the new sac uh, secular year. Y la fiesta de Tabernáculo, que era eh, la fiesta de cabeza de año, comienzo de año. It's also important to know that this, the distance between Jerusalem and Nazareth, Nazareth was about 90 miles. Y es bueno saber que la distancia era de 90 millas. So this was no short trip. Así que esto no era un viaje corto. It's not like us today, we traveled 70 miles, we got on our cars in the Bronx and we traveled about 60 miles an hour and we made it here in about an hour and so. No es como nosotros que venimos de, del Bronx acá y viajamos en nuestro auto a 60 millas uh, aproximadamente eh, y llegamos aquí en hora y media. This was 90 miles. Esto era 90 millas. It probably took four or five days. Quizás tomó de cuatro a cinco días. It's also important to note that the feast of the Passover es importante saber que la fiesta de la Pascua commemorated the deliverance of Israel from the hands of Egypt. Conmemoraba la liberación de Israel de las manos de Egipto. So it was the feast of salvation. Así que era la fiesta de la salvación. And I am just giving you all these facts because then we're going to kind of put everything together and we'll hit it, we'll, we'll start applying and you'll receive that the, the message that the Lord has put in my heart. Y le estoy dando todos estos datos para que lo los tengan y entonces más adelante los llevo en contexto. The feast of the Passover la fiesta de la Pascua was followed by the feast of the unleavened bread eh, le, le seguía la fiesta de los panes sin levadura which was seven days lo cual eran siete días so many families when they would travel from the different parts of Israel to Jerusalem así que muchas familias cuando viajaban a, a la fiesta de a Jerusalén they would have to leave four or five days earlier. Tenían que salir cinco días antes. Arrive to the festival of the Passover. En, eh, llegar a la fiesta de la Pascua. Perhaps stay for the festival of the unleavened bread. Y quedarse para la fiesta de los panes sin levadura. And then travel back when y, the feast was over. Y luego viajar cuando la fiesta terminaba. Probably a 
typically maybe a two-week vacation if you want to kind of just, you know, use our terminology the way we, we operate in this culture. Y si usamos nuestra termo, terminología, el argot de nuestra cultura, podríamos decir era aproximadamente dos semanas de vacaciones. It's possible that this was not the very first time that Jesus accompanied his parents to y, Jerusalem. Quizás no, era posible que no era la, esta, la primera vez que Jesús acompañaba a sus papás in any event, fiesta. in any event, this trip turned out to be very memorable. Y de todos los eventos, este evento en particular se volvió un evento para recordar. You see, Jerusalem was the center of the Jewish religion. Jerusalén era el centro de la religión judía. It's possible that many scholars and teachers and rabbis es posible que muchos teólogos y rabinos from all over the country would travel to Jerusalem for these feasts de toda la región venía al templo para celebrar esta fiesta and rabbis go to the synagogues y los rabinos iban a las sinagogas so I just want you to have that in mind as we study the context así que quiero que mantenga estos datos en mente para que cuando estudiemos en contexto and you know what happens His parents, when the feasts are over, they decide to leave. Y lo que pasa, lo que ocurre es que cuando se termina la fiesta, sus padres se van. And after traveling one day, y luego de el camino de un día, and again, not like us, you know, where we travel in a car, a train, a bus, our commutes are much easier, much simpler. Y nuevamente, no es como nosotros que tenemos eh, la transportación pública, eh, los buses, los vehículos, era, es mucho más fácil. They also traveled in caravans. Ellos viajaban en caravanas. They traveled in groups. Viajaban en grupos. So the fact that his parents... Así que el, el hecho de que sus padres and I'm talking about the parents of Jesus, Joseph and Mary y estoy hablando de los padres de Jesús, José y María lost track of where Jesus was perdieron de vista en donde estaba Jesús isn't so much a big deal because they probably thought he might have been hanging out with other members of the family y no, no, no se preocupaban mucho porque lo que pensaban era que él estaba eh, con los demás Traveling. familiares eh, viajando con los demás familiares. Not hanging out, he was traveling. Eh, Just want to make that clear. Viajando con los familiares. So we know the story. We get to the point where they realize Jesus is missing. Así que volviendo a la historia, eh, llegamos al punto donde ellos se dan cuenta que Jesús no está. And Mary, a concerned mother, y María, como una madre que se preocupa, goes and starts going they go back to Jerusalem and they start searching for Jesus Regresan a Jerusalén y comienzan a buscar a buscar a Jesús And after after a couple of days of searching they find him in the temple in Jerusalem Y luego de buscarlo por varios días lo encuentran en el templo en Jerusalén And Mary asks a question Son why have you done this to us Y María le pregunta hijo por qué no nos has hecho esto Your father and I have anxiously sought after you. Tu papá y yo te hemos buscado por, por donde quiera y con mucha ansiedad. And if you are a parent, you know the anxiety that exists when you lose track of your child. Y tú como padre o si eres padre sabes la, la ansiedad que se crea cuando no encuentras a tu hijo. And he was not a baby per se, but he was still far away from home. Y él no era un bebé, pero como quiera, él estaba bien lejos de su casa. They had traveled for a day without him. Y habían viajado un día sin él. And I remember an occasion in my personal life. Y me recuerdo una ocasión en mi vida propia. When my wife and I experienced that anxiety of having thought that we lost the child. Cuando mi esposa y yo experimentamos esa ansiedad, el pensar que habíamos perdido un, uno de nuestros hijos. And I'm sure all of you who are parents know what I'm talking about. Y estoy seguro que todo lo que son padres saben de lo que estoy hablando. In parentheses. En paréntesis. There was one time when I was working in a radio station, maybe 20 years ago. En una ocasión, como 20 años atrás, estoy trabajando en una estación de radio. 
I had to show up on a Saturday between the hours of 8 in the morning and maybe 1 in the afternoon. Tenía que trabajar un sábado en un horario de 8 a 1 de la tarde. And when I got home in the afternoon, I told my wife, I am going to take a nap. I'm really, really tired. Y cuando llegué a mi casa, eh, le dije a mi esposa, voy a tomar una siesta porque estoy eh, sumamente agotado. My wife was getting ready to leave the house with our oldest son, Josiah. Mi esposa estaba por irse de la casa con mi hijo mayor, Josiah. And I know that sometimes my family squirms a little bit when I mention their name in these messages, but, you know, uh, bear with me a little bit. Y sé que mi familia pues se sienten un poco incómodo cuando comparto esto, esto momento o, o menciono su nombre, pero lidien conmigo un momento. So our son, our middle son Timothy was about two and a half years old. Y nuestro hijo menor, eh, Timothy, tenía alrededor de dos años y medio. And what my wife was going to do with Josiah was something that she could not take Joseph. Y, oh, excuse me, could not take Timothy. Y lo que mi esposa iba a hacer con, con Josiah eh, no podía llevar al menor que es Timothy. She could have probably taken him, but she was probably looking to avoid just the uh, the effort of having to pack for him, and and you know what I'm talking about. Y ella pudo haberse lo llevado, pero el hecho de tener que preparar el bulto y llevar cosas para él, ustedes saben lo que quiero decir. So what happens? What happens is is that I tell my wife, I need, I'm going to take a nap now. I, I wish. If it's okay, please take Timothy with you. Y le digo a mi esposa, voy a tomar una siesta y le digo, por favor, lleve, llévate a Timothy contigo. Then she tells me, Dago, but I can. I wish he could stay with you because now I got to prepare his bag. Could, could he please stay with you? Y me dice, Dago, por, eh, por favor, eh, que se quede contigo porque entonces ahora tengo que preparar el bulto y sus cosas. And I guess I, I said something, but my mind said, thought something else. Y me, me parece que dije algo por mi boca, pero mi mente está pensando otra cosa. My mind was saying, no, please take him with you. I need to take a nap. Y mi mente lo que está diciendo, no, llévatelo porque necesito tomar una siesta. But I think my mouth said, okay, fine, leave him here. Pero me parece que lo que mi boca dijo fue, okay, muy bien, déjalo aquí. And I think she might have, you know, seen my, you know, back and forth and you know, she kind of was confused, but she finally heard what she heard. Y, y sé que ella estaba mirando mi, mi, mi uh, indecisión, como que quería y no quería, mi, mi ir para atrás y para adelante, pero ella escuchó lo que quería escuchar. Fathers, don't look at me with a side eye because you know that you've done the same thing. Padre, no me miren así medio raro porque sé que ustedes han hecho lo mismo. You've wanted to stay home alone so you could watch the football game. Y te quieres quedar en tu casa solo para poder mirar el juego de fútbol. Maybe you wanted to stay home and watch, you know, a television show, or maybe you just wanted to take a nap like me and you rather your wife take the kids. Y o, o quieres quedarte en tu casa solo para ver un, un programa o tomar una siesta como yo the y dices point. y quieres que tu esposa se lleve los niños. The point the point is, is that my wife decided to leave jo, decided to leave Tim as I was dozing off in the bed. Y el punto es que mi esposa deja el niño Tim mientras ya yo estoy en la cama ya cayendo I think I told her it's only going to be a 5 10 minute nap, power nap, I'll be fine. Y me acuerdo que le dije que va a ser una siesta corta, algunos 10 minutos. It wound up being about an hour and a half. Y paró eh, siendo una hora y media la Those siesta. Those are the best naps, by the way. Lo cual es una de las mejores siestas. When I open my eyes and I look around about the house, I don't see Tim. Y cuando abro mis ojos y miro y busco en la casa, no veo a Tim. And I said, wow, Susie decided to take him. Y Thank dije, you. wow. I, I love her. Y dije, wow, Susie decidió llevárselo. La amo. Got up, went about hanging out in the house, just doing what I had to do. And Me levanté, este, hice las cosas que hacía, lo más tranquilo, caminando por la casa. But about five minutes later, I started to, I don't know, you know, parents have that sense y como cinco minutos después, como que me llegó ese, usted sabe que los padres tienen ese sentido. I decided to call Susie and I said, Susie, uh, thank you for taking Timothy. Decidí llamar a Susie y darle las gracias por haberse <laughs> llevado a Timothy. 
She said, "Thank you for taking Timothy. I didn't take Timothy." Y ella me He's dice, with you. "Gracias por llevarte a Timothy. Yo no me llevé a Timothy. Yo te lo dejé a ti." I said, "But wait a minute. You he's not here." Y yo le digo, "Espérate, pero él no está aquí." And she's, "Well, he's not with me. He got to be. He must be with you." Y ella dice, "Él no está conmigo. Debe estar contigo." So, I, he's not here. Así que no no está aquí. I said, hold on, let me go downstairs and Pero, check with my mother-in-law. Espera un momento, déjame bajar y verificar y chequear con mi suegra. I walk in. Entro. And there is Timothy sitting at the table having a hot dog. Y ahí está Timothy en la mesa comiéndose un hot dog. Hi, daddy, how you doing? Hola, hola, papi, ¿cómo estás? And... Obviously, you know, our anxiety was gone. We were happy and, uh, you know, here he is today in the, in, in the back over there. Y claro, la, I didn't lose him. Claro, la ansiedad pues ya se había ido y todo estaba bien y aquí lo tenemos con nosotros. But it was just a few minutes of anxiety. Pero fue esos minutos de ansiedad. That's all it really was, maybe five minutes where we're on the phone. Fueron como algunos cinco minutos cuando estaba en el teléfono. Can you imagine Mary's anxiety? ¿Puedes imaginarte la ansiedad que tuvo María? And her question when she says, why have you done this to us? Y esa pregunta, ¿por qué nos has hecho esto? It's not a question of an angry parent. No es una pregunta de un padre que está enojado. But the anxiety, the anxiety of a concerned, loving parent. Sino más bien la ansiedad de un padre que ama. But here come the first words of Jesus. Pero aquí entran las primeras palabras de Jesús. And there is no coincidence to what Jesus is saying here. Y no hay ninguna coincidencia Every en lo word que that Jesus is registered as saying has a purpose. Toda palabra que él está diciendo va y tiene un propósito. He says, why did you seek me? Y él, él dice, ¿por qué me buscas? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? ¿No sabes que tengo que estar en los negocios de mi padre? This is not a disobedient, disrespectful, insubordinate response. Esto no es una respuesta irrespetuosa. But rather him giving his parents a glimpse of what his true purpose is all about. Pero sí dándole a los papás, uh, hablándole a los papás eh, el propósito y, y la razón por la cual él estaba allí y estaba hablando. It's very interesting that he answered a question with a question. Y, y es interesante que él contesta una pregunta con otra pregunta. Why have you done this to us? He Por, says, why did you seek me? ¿Por qué no estás haciendo esto? Y él dice, ¿por qué me buscas? Haven't you understood it yet? That no, I am about my father's business? ¿No lo has entendido? Que this, estoy en los negocios de mi padre. This is a 12-year-old. Esto es un, un niño de 12 años. I want you to know that that statement, I must be about my father's business, esa declaración que, en, que debe estar en los negocios de su padre, should sum, up the mo should sum up what I say should be the most important single truth in every Christian. Debe res resumir lo que yo digo que debe ser la verdad en todo cristiano. Joseph and Mary were on one schedule. José y María eh, tenían su agenda, su propia agenda. But Jesus had another schedule. Pero Jesús tenía otra agenda. The feast ended and his parents decided to go home. La fiesta terminó y sus padres deciden irse para su casa. But Jesus is not being a disobedient son. Jesús no está siendo o, o no es un niño desobediente. In fact, he marvels that his parents would not understand at this point in his life why he was missing. Él estaba más asombrado que sus papás todavía no habían entendido eh, el propósito de él eh, en ese momento. Now, Jesus isn't your typical 12-year-old. Jesus isn't your typical 12-year-old. Jesús, eh, con 12 años, no es un niño típico. Most typical 12-year-old kids want to throw the ball around. 
un niño de 12 años normalmente lo que quiere es tirar la, la pelota In our day and age, want to play a lot of video games. en estos días lo que quiere es jugar los juegos electrónicos I want you to know that Jesus was 12 years old Jesús tenía 12 años and although he was advanced in an advanced stage for a 12 year old y aunque él estaba en una etapa avanzada para la edad que él tenía 12 años he wasn't a 30 year old man with a 12 year old body él no tenía él no tenía él no era un hombre de 30 años con un cuerpo de 12 he didn't have the mind of a 30 year old él no tenía la mente de uno de 30 further in the text it says that he had to grow in wisdom and in stature and in favor with With God and man. Leímos eh, a, a, a más adelante dice en, en el texto que él crecía en sabiduría y en estatura y en favor para con los hombres. Dios so y los this hombres. This is very interesting because Jesus was 12, but he maybe acted, or, or obviously being God, right? He, 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 he had the maturity of someone who was older. Aquí vemos a Jesús de 12 años, sabemos que era Dios. Pero aún con eh, la edad de 12 años, pero actuando como con uno de más capacidad. But I want you to know that, as I said earlier, he needed to grow in stature and in wisdom. And, y, and I want to make something clear. Y como dije anteriormente, él tenía que crecer en sabiduría y en estatura. Jesus was never a four-year-old with a 30-year-old mind saying, why am I stuck in this four-year-old body? Jesús no era un niño de, de cuatro años con una mentalidad de 30 años y diciendo, y diciendo, ¿por qué estoy aquí estancado en este cuerpo? He had the mind of a 12 year old. Él tenía la mente uno de 12 años. Perhaps more mature than your typical 12 year old. Aunque era, mostraba ser más maduro que un, un niño de 12 años típicamente hablando. But he was still 12 years old. Pero todavía tenía 12 años. Now let's get back to the whole schedule thing. Así que vamos a, a devolvernos eh, para atrás a, a, a la agenda. So Joseph and Mary had a schedule. They had their business to así, take care of. Así que José y María tenían su propia agenda, sus cosas que atender. They had to return back to Nazareth. Tenían que regresarse a Nazaret. But Jesus had another schedule. Pero Jesús tenía otra agenda. I want to ask you, are you open to divine interruptions in your life? Quiero hacerte una pregunta. ¿Estás tú dispuesto a, a la intervención divina en tu vida? You see, a divine interruption is when something occurs that you were not expecting. La intervención divina es algo que pasa y que tú no lo estaba esperando. Divine interruptions are actually divine appointments by God. La interrupción divina es una cita, una cita establecida por Dios. And in this occasion, y en esta ocasión, Mary and Joseph have a schedule. María y José tenían su agenda. But Jesus had another schedule. Y Jesús tenía su propia agenda, otra agenda. Now, when Jesus says, Ahora, cuando, I must be about my father's business. Cuando Jesús dice, tengo que estar en los negocios de mi padre. As I was studying this text. Y mientras leía y estudiaba este versículo. And asking the Lord to reveal me more about this. Y pedirle al Señor que me revelara más acerca de esto. I was very taken aback by the clarity of purpose that Jesus had at a, as a 12 year old. Y estaba pensando en la claridad del propósito que Jesús tenía aún teniendo 12 años. He uses the word must. Él, él usa la palabra debe. I must be about my father's business. Él usa la palabra necesario. Es necesario estar en los negocios de mi padre. Even as a 12 year old. Aún a los 12 años. He had a sense of duty. Él tenía un sentido de, de, de responsabilidad. A sacred duty before the eyes of God. Una responsabilidad sagrada delante de los ojos de Dios. He understood that he, who he was. Él entendía quién era él. 
and he felt obliged to fulfill the purpose of God, the will of the Father. Y él, él sentía esa responsabilidad en cumplir con el propósito y, y la responsabilidad del Padre. And that's why he marveled that his parents who had received all those visions and all those dreams did not understand this moment in time. Y aquí él está maravillado porque él ve que su padre a pesar de todas las visiones y sueños todavía no ha entendido el propósito de él en ese momento. So I ask myself, what happened with Mary and Joseph? Why did they not understand the moment? Así que me preguntaba, ¿qué pasó con María y José que no entendieron en ese momento? And I think back of the silent years. Y pienso en los años silenciosos. The 10 years between the age of two when we last saw him returning from Egypt. En, lo, en, los años, en esos 10 años, eh, la edad de dos años cuando ellos están regresando de Egipto. To now 12 years old, those 10 years. Y ahora él tiene 12, o sea, that, esos 10 años. That lapse of time. Ese lapso de tiempo caused Mary and Joseph to forget what God had said concerning that child. Provocó que José y María se olvidaran lo que Dios había dicho de ese niño. Oftentimes the, oftentimes, the lapse of time causes us to forget what God has promised us. En ocasiones, eh, cuando hay ese espacio de tiempo, permite que nos olvidemos de las cosas que Dios nos ha But habló. God is an everlasting God. Pero Dios es Dios eterno. He is a faithful God. Es Dios fiel. He is faithful to what he said. Él es fiel a lo que él dice. He will fulfill what he said. Él va a cumplir lo que él dice. And if you forget, y si se te olvida, your child might remind you. Tu niño te lo va a recordar. Now I'm not bashing so much Mary and Joseph for being forgetful parents. No le estoy tirando a José y a María por ser padres olvidadizos. Although they did forget. O, o porque se olvidaron. I just really want to highlight the clarity of purpose that Jesus had even at 12. Lo que quiero resaltar es eh, aún Jesús a la edad de 12 años cómo él entendía el propósito. And it would be a clarity of purpose that would be with him throughout his entire life here on earth. Y era una claridad en el propósito que, que él tenía que lo iba a llevar toda su vida. The same passion that he had to fulfill the father's will back when he was 12 was the same passion that he would have when he's 30 years old and, and now he is in his public ministry. La misma pasión que él tenía a la edad de 12 es la misma pasión que él tenía a los 30 años cuando él entró en ministerio. I want us to look at the Lord's business plan. Quiero que veamos el plan del negocio de Dios. You see, Jesus is a businessman. Ve, Jesús es un hombre de negocio. The Father's business. Negocio del Padre. Even at 12. Aún a los 12 años. I want you to turn with me to the book of Luke, chapter 19. Vamos a Lucas 19. Let's look at verse 10. We're going to look at some verses pretty quickly. Vamos a, a ver unos versículos eh, ligeramente. Now these verses represent the time when Jesus is now in his full-fledged ministry. Estos versículos hablan de Jesús cuando estaba en pleno ministerio. Luke 19.10 says, and again, please project in Spanish. Por favor, proyectalo en español. Luke 19:10 For the son of man came to seek and save that what that that was lost. Look what it says in John chapter 4 verse 34 and I'm going to run through some verses here. John 4:34 It says, "My food," said Jesus, "is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work." I want you to turn with me to John chapter 5, verse 30. One, cinco, treinta. It says, By myself I can do nothing. I judge only as I hear, and my judgment is just. For I seek not to please myself, but him who sent me. I want you to look at now John 6, 38. One, seis, treinta y ocho.
It says, For I have come down from heaven, not to do my will, but to do the will of him who sent me. And this is the will of him who sent me, that I shall lose none of none of all that he has given me, but raise them up at the last day. For my Father's will is that everyone who looks to the Son and believes in him shall have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. I want you to now turn with me to the book of, or, uh, the book of John chapter 8. Verse 29, and I'm just running through these verses, and you see how every one of them talk about his purpose, fulfilling the will of the Father. Look what it says in 8:29. Lo que estamos viendo aquí es el propósito y cómo él buscaba cumplir con el propósito y la voluntad de Dios. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Look what it says in John chapter 12, verse 49 and 50. Juan 12, 49 y 50. For I did not speak of my own accord, but the Father who sent me commanded me what to say and how to say it. I know that this command leads to eternal life, so whatever I say is just what the Father has told me to say. And finally, let us look at John chapter 17, verses 1 through 4. Finalmente, Juan capítulo 17. This is a prayer that Jesus makes. Esta es una oración que Jesús hace. Shortly before his betrayal and crucifixion. Poco tiempo antes de su eh, traición y crucifixión. And again, notice what he was saying at 12. He's still saying as he's getting ready to face betrayal and crucifixion. Nótese lo que él está diciendo a la edad de 12. Lo está, vuelve y lo está diciendo a los 30 años enfrentando at traición no y crucifixión. At no point in time. At no point in time did he lose sight of the purpose for which he came. En ningún momento él perdió enfoque la visión y el, y el propósito para cual él había venido. John 17 it says after Jesus said this he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your son that your son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given me. Now this is eternal life that they may know you the the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. Notice how he says here, Father, I am completing the work that you gave me. Notice que aquí él dice, Padre, estoy completando la, el trabajo que me has dado. Jesus was a faithful servant. Jesús era un servidor fiel. He understood the plan of the Father. Él entendía el plan del Padre. The business of the Father. El negocio del Padre. And he understood his role in the plan. Y él, y él entendía su papel en ese plan. And he was faithful from the moment he was born. Y él fue fiel desde el momento que él nació. To the moment that he gave his life on that cross hasta for you and I. Hasta el momento que él dio su vida en la cruz. He was faithful to obey the Father's business. So what is the Father's business? Así que, ¿cuál es el negocio del Padre? We read in Luke 19 that the Son of Man came to seek that which was lost. Leímos en Lucas que él vino a buscar lo que estaba a buscar y salvar a lo que se había perdido. He came to seek and save that which was lost. Él vino a buscar y salvar lo que se había perdido. So the father's business is salvation. Así que el negocio del padre es salvación. Jesus came to restore the image of God that was lost in mankind. Jesús vino a restaurar la imagen de Dios que estaba perdido en los hombres. The father's business is to bring 
salvation to all mankind. El negocio del Padre es traer salvación para toda la humanidad. The Father is the administrator of salvation. El padre, He oversees the process from beginning to end. El Padre es el administrador de la salvación y Él supervisa el proceso desde su comienzo But hasta el final. But we serve a triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Y nosotros servimos a un Dios trino, el Padre, Hijo and y Espíritu Santo. And guess what? All three of them participate in our salvation. Y todos, y esos tres participan en nuestra salvación. In the day of creation, they said, let us make man. But in the day of salvation, they said, oh, excuse me, in the day, in, in salvation, they say, let us save man. En la salvación, dice, vamos a salvar el hombre. Y en la creación, crean al hombre. I want you to turn with me to the book of Ephesians because I want to show you in the scriptures how the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit all participate in our salvation. Quiero que vayamos al libro de Efesios porque quiero que veas cómo el Padre, el Hijo y el Espíritu Santo están obrando en nuestra salvación. Ephesians chapter 1 beginning with verse 3. Efesios 1 comenzando con el versículo 3. It says And, and, and here we're going to highlight what the Father did to originate the plan. Y aquí vamos a resaltar lo que hizo el Padre para el, el plan original. Look what Paul writes. Miren lo que Pablo escribe. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ, For he chose us in him before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. In love, he predestined us to be adopted as his sons through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will to the praise of his glorious grace, which he has freely given us in the one he loves. So here in this verses 3 to 6 we see that salvation originated in the mind of God when he predestined us before the creation of the world so that we could become his adopted sons. Así que aquí vemos en estos versículos cómo el Señor nos creó y nos predestinó para salvación. According to Paul, that plan originated in the heart and mind and will of the Father God. Y ese plan se originó en la mente y en el corazón de Dios. And as Jesus was growing up as a child, y así como cuando Jesús crecía como niño, He began to understand with every passing day that plan. Él comenzó a entender cada día, mientras pasaba cada día, ese plan. And by the time he's 12 years old, he is crystal clear on this plan. Y cuando él tiene 12 años, él está bien claro de ese plan. Now let us look at verses 7 through 12 Ve so that we could now see the Jesus' purpose and role in our salvation. De los versículos 7 en adelante vamos a ver el rol, el papel de Jesús en nuestra salvación. It says that in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace that, the, that he lavished on us with all wisdom and understanding. And he made known to us the mystery of his will according to his good pleasure which he purposed in Christ to put into effect when the times will have reached their fulfillment to bring all things in heaven and on earth together under one head even Christ so what am I saying here Jesus understood his role he is the one who brought salvation to fruition he was the one who worked it out he was the one who accomplished it on our behalf the father thought it out but it took Jesus to come as a servant and, and take the form of man and carry out our salvation that was a lot <laughs> I forgot you were there <laughs> You don't mind repeating. So the work of the Son is to bring us redemption through His blood. Así que el, la, la obra del, y el trabajo del, de Jesús era traernos redención a través the de su sangre. The work of the Son is to bring us forgiveness. Y traernos perdón. The work of the Son is to bring us an inheritance. La, la obra de Él es traernos herencia. All the verses in the Bible tell us that we have reconciliation in Him. Tenemos reconciliación Sa en Él. We are sanctified in Him. Estamos santificados And en Él. And we will be glorified through 
through him. Y vamos a ser glorificados a través de él. Now let us look at the role of the Holy Spirit in salvation. Ahora vamos a ver el, el papel, el rol del Espíritu Santo en la salvación. Look at verse 13. Versículo 13. And you were also included in Christ when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Having believed, you were marked in him with a seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance unto the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. So, the Father originated the plan. Así que el Padre originó el plan. Jesus brought it to fruition. Jesús lo trajo en efecto. But it is now the role of the Holy Spirit to communicate it to your life. Ahora es el, el papel, el trabajo del Espíritu Santo de comunicarlo a tu vida. He makes salvation a reality in your life. Él hizo la salvación una realidad en tu a vida. A present reality in your life. Una realidad presente He en tu vida. He makes salvation applicable to you. Él hizo la, la salvación a, a, aplicable a ti. And then He seals you with the Holy Spirit Entonces te sella con su to guarantee your deposit that you will receive an inheritance para for the glory of God. Para garantizar tu herencia y que la vas a recibir para la avanza de su gloria. So all three, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit participate in our salvation. Así que ellos tres, el Padre, el Hijo, el Espíritu Santo, participan en tu salvación. But I want to focus again back on Jesus because he's the one who is in the business of the Father. Pero quiero devolverlos a, al enfoque a Jesús porque él es el que está en el negocio del Padre. Turn with me to Philippians chapter 2 verses 6 through 8. Vamos a Filipenses 2, 6 al 8. Let's talk about Jesus as a servant Vamos a hablar de Jesús como ser, como servidor. because in order for you to be a good businessman in the kingdom of the Father Por, you have to have the heart of a servant which Jesus had Philippians chapter 2 let's look at verse 6 Filipenses 2, 6 who being in the very nature of God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped but made himself nothing taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness and being found in appearance as a man he humbled himself and became obedient to death even death on a cross so here we see the condescension of Jesus. Aquí entonces vemos la condescendencia de Jesús. He took upon him the nature of man. Él tomó sobre él la, la naturaleza de hombre. Though he was equal with the Father in, the, in power. Aunque él, él, él era igual con el Padre en poder. Realizing that now he has taken the form of flesh. Real, eh, entendiendo que tomó la forma de carne. He humbles himself and becomes a servant. Él se humilla y se convierte en un servidor. Jesus stooped down to become a child subject to his mother. Él descendió para ser un, un niño con su mamá. And he also stooped down to become a man subject to his father. Y él también descendió para ser un hombre como su papá. The Bible says he took the nature of a servant. La Biblia dice que él tomó la, la forma de un servidor. Not to do his own will, but to do the father's will. No para hacer su voluntad, sino la del padre. He humbled himself. Se humilló. Becoming obedient to death. It says in Hebrew chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 and I want you to turn with me. En Hebreos 7 Hebrews chapter 10 verses 5 through 7 Hebreos 10 it says therefore when Christ came into the world he said sacrifice and offering you did not desire but a body you prepared for me with burnt offerings and sin offerings you were not pleased then I said here I am it is written about me in the scroll I have come to do your will O God so Jesus took a solemn oath to become a man and pay the ransom for our salvation. Así que Jesús eh, hizo un pacto, 
para venir y pagar por nuestra salvación y redención. He decided to pay the price for our salvation regardless of the price. Él pagó, él decidió pagar por el por el por nuestra salvación no importando el precio. And in these verses here it quotes what was the intention of his heart. He says, "Here I am, I've come to do your will." Y aquí estos versículos expresan lo que está en su corazón y él dice, "He aquí, vengo a hacer tu voluntad." And again, We're just establishing all these truths and all these principles. We will begin to apply them to our daily, daily lives in just a few seconds. Y en unos momentos vamos a estar aplicando estos principios que hemos estado hablando. I want us to now focus on what was the driving motivation of Jesus. Y quiero hablarle qué fue lo que motivó, cuál era la motivación impulsora en Jesús. I want you to turn back with me to the chapter 8 of the book of John. Juan capítulo 8, vayamos allí. We read it earlier, but I want to rehash it. I want to read it again. Lo habíamos ya leído, pero vamos a volverlo a leer. Look at verse 29. Versículo 29 del 8 del libro de Juan. It reveals what was his motivation. Y muestra cuál era su motivación. It says, the one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Jesus had one desire in his heart. Jesús tenía un solo deseo en su corazón. And it was to please the Father. Y era agradar al Padre. That's why he said, I must. Por eso dice, yo debo. He had an undivided devotion and dedication. Él tenía una dedicación. He didn't have another business in mind. Él no tenía ninguna otra He negocio. didn't have another mission. Él no tenía otra misión. He was only compelled to fulfill the Father's business. Estaba decidido de, de cumplir con el negocio. De su padre. He had a life commission upon his shoulders. Él tenía una comisión sobre sus hombros. And he knew it all of his years. Y él lo sabía en todos los años de su Even vida. Even when he was 12 years old. Aún cuando tenía 12 años. I want you to turn now with me to the book of Luke chapter 4. Quiero que vayas conmigo al libro de Lucas capítulo 4. Here is a portion of scripture that Jesus read one day as he sat in the synagogue. Y esto es una porción que Jesús leyó un día que él estaba sentado en la sinagoga. And remember he had the habit of going often to the synagogue. Y me recuerdo que él tenía el hábito de ir a la sinagoga. Look at what it says, chapter 4 of Luke. Miren lo que verse dice Lucas, 16. Lucas 4. He went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day he went into the synagogue as was his custom. And he stood up to read the scroll of the prophet Isaiah, which was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, The Spirit of the Lord is on me, because he has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners, and recovery for the sight for the blind, to release the oppressed, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. Glory to God. Give him praise. Dale alabanzas al Señor. He came to preach to the poor. El vino a predicar a los pobres. Those that are poor in spirit. Los que son pobres en el espíritu. He came to heal the brokenhearted. Vino a sanar los los que estaban quebrantados por corazón. He healed all manner of sickness. El vino a sanar toda clase de enfermedad. He came to preach deliverance to the captives. Vino a predicar la libertad a los cautivos. Give sight to the blind. Dar visión a los ciegos. Set those that are oppressed to be free. Y liberar aquellos que están en opresión. And to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Take Señor. notice of who his audience is. Tenga en cuenta cuál es su audiencia. The poor. Los pobres. The brokenhearted. Los que están heridos the de captives. Corazón, los que están the blind. Los ciegos, the oppressed. Los oprimidos. That's who he came for. A esos que vino That's Jesús. you and I. 
usted y yo. He was faithful to the plan. Él fue fiel al plan. And if you're here today, y si estás hoy aquí, it's because he has delivered you es porque te ha liberado from this condition. De estas condiciones. He was faithful to his father's plan. Él fue, él, él fue fiel al plan del padre. He was faithful to the end. Él fue fiel hasta el final. Turn with me to the book of Matthew, chapter 26. Mateo, capítulo 26. Let us look at verses 36 through 39. 36 al 39. Matthew 26. Mateo 26. 36 through 39. 36 al 39. It says, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me. Yet not as I will, but as you will. Jesus was willing to go all the way to, the, to death to fulfill the father's business. Jesús estaba dispuesto a ir todo el camino hasta el final. Aún hasta la muerte, I want you to know del padre. I want you to know that even during the, 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 the drops of blood that were coming from his pores Aún las gotas de sangre que salían por sus poros, what drove him was to please the father lo que lo llevó fue a agradar al padre. when he was being whipped 39 times él fue latigado 39 veces. It was the father's business that continued to compel him to to with to endure that. Fue el plan del padre lo que lo llevó a enfrentar eso. When they put a crown of thorns upon his head, Cuando he had in mind to do the father's will. Cuando pusieron una corona de espinas sobre su cabeza, él lo que tenía en su mente era cumplir con el plan de Dios. When he was being stripped naked, his mind was set on the father's business. Cuando él estaba siendo desnudado, quitado su ro ropa, su mente estaba en el negocio de su When padre. When he was being mocked and spat at what kept them going was the father's business y cuando estaba siendo burlado y escupido su mente su pensamiento estaban en el negocio de su padre when they made him carry his own cross down the via dolorosa he kept going because he had in mind to fulfill the father's business y cuando él tuvo que cargar la cruz por la via dolorosa él tenía en su mente el negocio del padre on that cross when they pierced his side he did not complain or open his mouth because he had the father's business in mind estando en la cruz atravesando su su costado con una espada él tenía en su mente el plan del negocio del padre because no of the quejó. father's because of the father's business he yielded himself willingly to death y por el plan de negocio del padre él se humilló hasta lo sumo hasta la muerte and on that cross he said it is finished referring es, to the father's business y en esa cruz él dijo consumado es porque él tenía en mente el negocio del padre I want you to padre. know something quiero que sepas algo the father's business isn't about being famous el negocio del padre no tiene que ver de, en, eh, ser uh, famoso. It isn't about being wealthy and celebrated. No tiene que ver con ser rico y ser un célebre. Ultimately, the father's business will take you to death. La, el negocio del padre lo que te va a llevar es a muerte. Oh, not a lot of amens now, right? No, no escucho muchos amenes ahora. The father's business drove Jesus to death. El negocio del padre llevó a Jesús a la muerte. But he was faithful to his father. Pero él era fiel a su papá. In all the affairs of the father. Él era fiel a su padre. And because he was faithful to the end. Y porque él era fiel hasta el final. The father who knows how to reward those that are faithful. El padre como sabe recompensar a aquellos que le son fiel. On that third day. 
en ese tercer día. Said, son, you've been faithful. Él dijo, hijo, tú has you have fiel. finished the work. Tú has terminado la obra. You didn't look to another business. You followed my business plan. No, no miraste a otro negocio. Tú miraste el mío. Lo Come out of that grave. Grave cannot contain you. Sal de esa, de esa de esa tumba porque la tumba no te puede contener and on that glorious day he resurrected and overcame death y en ese glorioso día él resucitó y conquistó la muerte and the bible says that he was given a name la biblia dice que le fue dado un nombre a name that is above every name nombre que sobre todo nombre to whom every knee shall bow a cual toda rodilla se and every tongue confess y toda lengua confesará that he is God for the glory of the Father que él es Dios para la gloria del Padre Now I want to start to apply everything that we've covered. Ahora vamos a aplicar todo lo que cubrimos. I spoke to you about a divine interruption in the life of Mary and Joseph. Te hablé de la divina interrupción en la vida de José They y de María. They were going about their schedule. Ellos tenían su propia agenda. Had lost sight of God's word upon them and upon that child that they were raising. Habían perdido la palabra que había sido hablada sobre el niño que ellos tenían. Oftentimes in the kingdom of God, in the business of God, en ocasiones en el reino de Dios, en los negocios de, de Dios, we have our own schedule. Tenemos nuestra propia agenda. But if you are going to be faithful and loyal like Jesus was to follow the business plan of the Father, pero si tú vas a ser fiel en seguir como Jesús siguió el, el negocio de su padre, you have to allow for divine interruptions tú, in your life. Tú tienes que permitir interrupciones divinas en tu vida which are really divine appointments lo cuales son citas divinas what do I mean by that que es lo que yo quiero decir con that eso? you didn't just come into this world to just work raise kids work pay bills and pay more bills no es que usted llegó a este mundo solamente para criar hijos pagar eh, facturas eh, eh, deudas The Lord did not deliver you from sin so that you could just simply come and sit in a church pew Sunday after Sunday. El Señor no te liberó del, del pecado solamente para que venga domingo tras domingo the a congregarte aquí. The business of the Father entails much more than that. El negocio del Padre tiene que ver, ver mucho más que eso. But you have to allow for divine interruptions. Pero tienes que permitir Every so often divina. something will occur. En ocasiones cosas van a ocurrir. Don't lose your mind when things happen that probably you weren't expecting. No pierdas la mente cuando cosas ocurren que tú no esperabas. Understand that God is in charge. Entiende que Dios está a cargo. And in the Father's business. Y que es el negocio del Padre. He has a schedule. Él tiene una agenda. That probably is in your schedule. Que quizá no es tu agenda. But he knows what's best for you. Pero él sabe lo que es mejor para He's ti. guiding your life. Él está guiando tu he vida. promised to be with you all the, all the days of your life. Él, él, tú vas a estar con él todos los días he de will tu never vida. leave you nor forsake you. Another thing that I mentioned was clarity of purpose. Otra cosa que mencioné fue la claridad del propósito. If we are to do the Father's business, we need clarity of purpose. Y si vamos a hacer el negocio del Padre, necesitamos claridad en el propósito. Paul told Timothy, don't get, in, don't get entangled in the affairs of this world. Como le dijo a Timoteo, no te enredes en las cosas de este mundo. A soldier in the kingdom of God cannot get entangled in the things un, of this un world. Un soldado en el del reino de Dios no se enreda. You belong to Jesus and to his kingdom. Your heart, your mind should all be focused on following the will of the Father. What do I mean by getting entangled, entangled in the affairs of this world? You know, oftentimes the reason we feel burdened in our lives is because we have debt. En ocasiones, la razón por que nos sentimos eh, cargados es porque tenemos deuda. And oftentimes, we cannot get to church service or meet 
the, the, or, or be able to make it to all the meetings in church because we have a, a job to do. Y en ocasiones no podemos llegar a congregarnos porque tenemos un trabajo que realizar. And that is a reality that we all experience. Y eso es una realidad que todos experimentamos. But oftentimes what weighs us down isn't so much the job, it's the burden of, the, of debt and, 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 the, and, and the sense of never getting from underneath it. Y en ocasiones lo que nos carga eh, no es en sí el trabajo, sino la deuda, porque no, podimo, no podemos cumplir con ella. We have to ask the Lord to free us of debt. Tenemos que pedirle al Señor que nos haga libre de esas deudas. So that we can maintain a clear mind in the in the purpose of God's business. Para que business. tengamos claridad en nuestra mente en el negocio del Padre. There are dangers when we deviate from the vision of God. Hay peligros cuando nos desviamos del propósito de Dios. I was wondering and thinking to myself, what are, where does the Church of America stand today? Y estaba pensando, ¿dónde la, la Iglesia de América está hoy parada? You know, I dare say this today. Me atrevo a decir esto hoy. A good portion of the church in America has deviated from the purpose of the Father's business. Una gran parte de la iglesia hoy se ha desviado del propósito y del negocio del Padre. As I think back for the last 50 years, y cuando miro para atrás, 50 años atrás, I see that the nation has prospered in many ways. He visto que la nación ha prosperado en diferentes And I'm talking generally speaking. Y estoy hablando en forma general. And as I see in my lifetime, 50, 50 plus years, y cuando yo miro mi vida, 50 y más años, I see how the church has evolved. He visto como la iglesia ha evolucionado. More and more big, luxurious temples are being built. Templos lujosos están siendo construidos aún más en este tiempo. And most of these temples are being built outside of the cities. Y muchos de estos templos están siendo construidos fuera de la ciudad. And what's happened is, is that the prosperity of this country, y lo que pasa que la prosperidad de esta nación, at least in my lifetime, in the 50 years that I've been here, por lo menos en los 50 años que he estado aquí que he visto, and when I and when I refer to the average American, I'm not. And again, I'm I'm speaking generally speaking. Y, y nuevamente le repito, estoy hablando en términos generales. The average American has prospered. El, el, el americano promedio ha prosperado. But unfortunately, it's even allowed the church to shift their focus. Pero a la vez ha, ha hecho que la iglesia eh, se mueva de su enfoque. As people have sought more riches Porque la gente está buscando o tiene más riquezas. as I said church buildings have gotten bigger Como le dije, la, el templos, eh, han crecido, the son focus más grandes. has shifted from the gospel and to the saving of souls to now being prosperous y ahora eh, ha cambiado su enfoque de de predicar el evangelio, salvar almas, I think, hacer prósperos. I think back about maybe again a hundred years how there was in the church a focus for evangelism. Cien años atrás pienso yo, cien años atrás el enfoque que había en el evangelizar. Nowadays, you don't see too many churches evangelizing. Hoy día, tú no ves muchas iglesias evangelizando. Now you just hear a lot of prosperity theology. Hoy lo que se escucha es la teología de la prosperidad. If Jesus were around, he would he would tremble to see what has happened with his business. Y si Jesús hubiese estado aquí, él temblaría en ver qué ha pasado con su negocio. That instead of preaching the Father's business, which is salvation to all mankind through Jesus Christ, que en vez de predicar el el, el evangelio de salvación que are, a través de we Cristo, are, we are preaching how to grow your bank account. Estamos predicando cómo cómo hacer que tu cuenta de banco crezca. But it's time to get back to the Father's business. Pero es tiempo de devolvernos al negocio del Padre. It's time to put away the false visions. Es, es tiempo de guardar la falsa visión. It's time to put away what has deviated us from God. Es tiempo de guardar lo que nos ha desviado del, del, de Our Dios. riches are not of this world. 
Las riquezas Our riches are heavenly. La, la, nuestras riquezas no son de este mundo, son riquezas eh, celestiales. God said, if you would seek my my kingdom and my righteousness first, I will give you all these things. La Biblia dice el Señor diciendo, si busca mi reino eh, primeramente, yo, todas las demás cosas serán añadidas. I also spoke about servanthood, Jesus' servanthood. También hablé del servicio de Jesús. The Bible says in Mark 9, verse 35. La Biblia dice en Marcos 9. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last. El que quiere ser primero será último. And a servant of them all. Y el servidor de todos ellos. We have to understand that to be able to be a faithful follower of the kingdom business tenemos que entender que para ser un fiel seguidor del, ne del negocio del reino or to be a useful servant in the business of the father o ser un servidor útil en el servicio en el negocio de dios we have to be willing to serve one another tenemos que estar dispuesto a servir uno the bible a says no master is greater no no servant is greater than their master la biblia dice que ningún servidor es mayor que su señor i always saw my master serving Siempre he visto a, a mi señor como como I've seen him maestro. washing the feet of his disciples. Lo he visto eh, lavar los pies de los discípulos. And if my master can do that, y si mi señor, mi maestro puede I hacer eso, I should esto, be willing to do anything in the Father's business. Yo también debo estar dispuesto a hacer lo mismo para otros. I believe that for the church, Yo creo que para la iglesia, it is time to stop minding our own business es tiempo de, de preocuparnos menos por nuestros asuntos, and start minding the business of the Father. Y preocuparnos por el negocio del padre. You see, it seems like, you know, we make time for everything else, but only squeeze time for God. ¿Ves? Nosotros hacemos tiempo, buscamos tiempo para todas las cosas y siempre estamos eh, con menos tiempo para las cosas del Padre. God's business deserves better than your leftovers. El negocio del Padre es mejor que tus He's migajas. worthy of your first place. Él es digno de tu, del primer lugar. But when you begin to mind God's business, y cuando tú comienzas a, a ocuparte por los negocios de Dios, understand that your priorities will change. Entiende que tus prioridades van a no, I'm not telling you to go quit your job. Yo no estoy diciendo que vayas y renuncies a tu trabajo. But you can serve God in your job and still have God in your mind. Pero tú puedes trabajar y servir en tu trabajo y todavía mantener a Dios en tu mente. You could still make God part of your part of your every day, even as you serve God in the workplace. Y tú puedes todavía hacer de Dios parte de tu día, aunque Tú estás subiendo, uh, sirviendo en otro lugar. The point is, is to make yourself available to God. El punto es que te hagas disponible para Dios. Even in the workplace. Aún en la área de trabajo. You may have to shut off a football game. Quizás tengas que apagar un juego de fútbol. You may have to shut off the television set or probably the phone. O apagar la televisión o aún el teléfono lo tengas que apagar. You're going to have to put Jesus in the pro as a priority in your life. Es poner a Jesús en prioridad en tu vida. Be a giver, not a taker. Él es dador y no... Y Offer your time, your energy, and your resources for the Lord and for His kingdom. Ofrece eh, tu tiempo para el Señor y su reino. Understand that the Father's business is always about others. Entiende que el negocio del Padre te trata de otros. Hallelujah! Praise the Lord. Gloria a Dios. You have a divine mission. Tú tienes una misión divina. Just like Jesus had a mission. Así como Jesús tenía he has una now misión. given us that mission. Y nos ha dado esa he said, go out into the world and preach the gospel to all men. When was the last time you preached to someone? Fue la vez que le a Remember, the business of the Father is salvation. Recuerda, el negocio del Padre es salvación. It's not about us simply building a name. No, no se trata de nosotros eh, construir un nombre. It's about others. Se trata de otros. Praise the Lord. Alabado sea el Señor. At 12 years old. A la, a la edad de 12 años. Jesus understood the Jesus, plan of the Father. Jesús entendió el plan. He was padre. about the father's business. Él entendió el negocio del padre. 
today he is at the right hand of the Father. Hoy está sentado a la diestra del Padre. And I have something to tell you and it's that he is now working on your behalf. Tengo que decirte, él ahora está trabajando a tu favor. When he came into this world, he was about the Father's business. Cuando él vino a este mundo, él estaba enfocado en el negocio del Padre. He's a businessman. Porque es un hombre de negocio. But now he's, in, he's, he's concerned about your business. Ahora está interesado en tu negocio. The Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 34. Romanos 8, versículo 34. That dice, he lives day and night to intercede for us. Que él vive día y noche para interceder por nosotros. The Bible says in Hebrews 7:25. La palabra dice en Hebreos 7:25 that he's interceding for us day le, and night. Que él está intercediendo por nosotros día y noche. He's working on your behalf now. Él está trabajando a tu favor ahora. He's been working all along. Él está trabajando todo el he tiempo. He hasn't stopped working. No se ha detenido. And he won't stop working. Y no se detendrá en trabajar. If you are here today, si estás aquí hoy, it's because he's been loyally working on your behalf. Es porque fielmente está trabajando a tu presenting favor. Presenting you to the Father. Presentándote al Padre. Day and night. Día y noche. So that you don't fall and stumble. Para que no caigas. He's a loyal businessman. Él es un hombre de negocio. In the negocio business of fiel. the Father. En los negocios de su and padre. now in your business Ahora en tu negocio. He, I don't know about you but I welcome him into my business glory be to God Gloria sean a Dios. two thousand years have passed Dos mil años han pasado. but he's still working in the father's business y todavía le está trabajando and en now el he has me del padre. who he's interceding for y ahora está intercediendo por nosotros. I want to encourage you church Quiero, eh, motivarte, iglesia to start focusing once again into the Father's business. Que comiences a enfocarte en el negocio del Padre. We have to put away the things that we thought our lives were going to turn out to be. Tenemos que poner a un lado aquellas cosas que nosotros esperábamos que sucediesen. It is time for us to focus back on the Father. Es tiempo de enfocarnos en el Padre. As a 12-year-old, he had the clarity. A la edad de 12 años, él tenía una claridad. We need that clarity. Y nosotros necesitamos We cannot deviate from the purpose and the vision that God has for this church. No podemos desviarnos con el, del propósito que Dios tiene para esta iglesia. Stand with me Pongas and let us pray. Fin. Estemos de pies y oremos. Hallelujah. Praise God. Glory be to God. Members of the altar also come on up. Que los, eh, eh, We want to finish el in a prayer. Del altar que suba. Vamos a orar. Hallelujah. I want to make a prayer. Quiero orar. And ask that the Lord would help us recommit back to the Father's business. Y pedirle al Señor que nosotros nos comprometemos Hallelujah. y nos devolvamos al negocio del Padre. Glory be to Jesus. Gloria a Dios. Hallelujah. Every eye closed, every head bowed. Cada eh, cabeza eh, en posición de orar y ojos cerrados. Father, I come before you this afternoon to Padre, thank you for this time and for this word that you have put in my heart. Padre, vengo delante de ti en esta tarde para darte las gracias por este mensaje que has puesto en mi corazón. I've spoken it as you've put it in my heart. Lo he hablado como lo has puesto en mi corazón. Lord, you impressed upon me this verse. Tú has impresionado, impregnado este versículo. You showed me how Jesus, even at 12, was focused with clarity as to your purpose. Me mostraste como Jesús, aún a los 12 años, estaba con una claridad en el propósito. Father, in this day and age, your church has deviated from that purpose. Padre, en este tiempo, la iglesia se ha desviado de ese propósito. But I pray, Lord, for this cell group here. Pero yo oro por este grupo que está aquí. And for your universal church throughout the nations. Y por tu iglesia universal en las naciones. Lord, bring us back to the purpose. Padre, Señor, tráenos para atrás al propósito. Watch over us, Lord. Vela sobre nosotros. Just like Mary and Joseph, through the lapse of time, forgot what you had said. Así como María y José que se olvidaron de lo que tú dijiste en ese We don't want to forget tiempo. and deviate from your vision, Lord. No nos queremos olvidar y desviarnos de tu propósito. Keep us on the straight and narrow. 
Manténnos en línea. En Forgive el us, Lord, if we have deviated in any way. Perdónanos si no hemos desviado. And bring us back to your heart. Y devuélvenos a tu corazón. Bring us back to your business. Devuélvenos a tu negocio. Bring us back to your will. Tra devuélvenos a tu voluntad. That your will would be supreme above all things. Que tu voluntad sea primario sobre todas las cosas. That we wouldn't matter cosa. anything else but to fulfill the will que of no the Father. Que no nos importe nada más que, cu que cumplir tu propósito. Guide our hearts back to you, Lord. Trae nuestro corazón that we would be pleasing before you that we would be that, that, that church que seamos esa iglesia that walks in your ways que camina en tu camino that wants to do your will que quiere hacer tu voluntad that wants to please the Father above all things que quiere agradar al Padre sobre todas las cosas Father bring us back to you Padre trae, devuélvenos a ti bring us back to you Lord devuélvenos a ti Señor guide us back to your heart guíanos a tu corazón we need you Jesus te necesitamos Jesús we need you Jesus like never before ne te necesitamos Jesús como nunca antes Father watch over us vela sobre nosotros throughout all this time Father here on earth may your church que tu iglesia, throughout the world a través del mundo, come back to you a ti. in Jesus name we pray en el nombre de Jesús oramos. amen and amen, amen, y amen. este ha sido su programa Voz de Restauración si desea comunicarse con nosotros, escríbanos al P.O. Box 70, Bronx, New York, 10473. O visita nuestra página web www.elamanecer.org. Nos despedimos hasta la próxima. Que Dios te bendiga.